My name is Carol Thatcher. I'm Margaret Thatcher's only daughter. And I saw from the inside in number 10 uh, what it was like for 11 and a half years when she was Britain's first woman prime minister. That included obviously her relationship with Ronald Reagan and other world leaders when they came to visit. I do remember going into number 10. I'd been to the theater in London one evening and it was quite late and I went in and my mother had a reputation which was totally justified for working late into the night. And I said, hi, mum, don't want to disturb you. What are you working on? She said, foreign policy, dear. So I said, oh, so she said, Ron Reagan and I will sound the bell for freedom in Europe. One of my mother's aides said, actually, they each believe so strongly, but together they were unstoppable. And it isn't just what they talked about doing, anyone can talk, it's that they delivered. And I think this is what made their partnership and, of course, in relation to the Berlin Wall, such, uh, such an immense success. Indeed, uh, a world, a world changer. And they didn't just sound the bell, they delivered. I know President Reagan was out of office um, by November 1989, but together with Gorbachev, uh, my mother and Ronald Reagan, that action, that success, gave thousands, millions and millions of people who lived under communism freedom, and this is what they both so deeply believed in. I remember meeting Ronald Reagan. He had the most wonderful charisma and presence and charm. And I remember someone in the White House telling me that when Mr. Gorbachev and Mrs. Gorbachev went to visit, the crowds outside were very enthusiastic. Of course, he was a very popular international figure and he was very late which you don't do if you're invited to the White House. And all the White House staff were getting a bit nervous. Anyway, along came Mr. Gorbachev and President May said, hi, we thought you'd gone home, which of course is exact, which of course was brilliant to diffuse, you know, the embarrassment. And after his departure, one of his aides apparently said to him, oh, well, Mr. President, I hope you don't mind that Mr. Gorbachev is rather hogging the limelight. You know, he's on every television screen, oh no. You see, I once co-starred with Errol Flynn. I, he, he had a line for every occasion, and normally it was a winning one. One slightly amusing story since we're in the presidential library. When my mother and the other guests that Mrs. Reagan had invited flew from the funeral in Washington, D.C. over here, uh, at the burial, my mother was sitting next to Arnold Schwarzenegger, then governor of California. And she'd left her sunglasses on Air Force One. Of course, there was a Californian sun sinking. And Arnie said, oh, well, look, borrow mine. And I think Ron Reagan, who had the most wonderful, charming, twinkling, charismatic sense of humor, would have been amused that his, uh, that his uh, old political mate, Maggie, said goodbye to him wearing a pair of Terminator shades. Uh, they, they were definitely friends. On several occasions, notes were exchanged on birthdays, which goes well beyond the normal courtesies afforded to fellow leaders. My brother, a twin brother, got lost in a car rally in the Sahara Desert. And when he was found, I understand that Ronald Reagan rang up to say how relieved he was. There was a personal dimension to this political relationship that I don't think is guaranteed between other world leaders. And I really put that back to the fact that they met before they became world leaders. There was a genuine affection. There was a genuine admiration. I remember after she flew to Washington for President Reagan's funeral and then came here for the uh, sunset burial back in the UK, an American diplomat said to her, oh, some of the American people were very appreciative that you actually went to the US for President Reagan's funeral and she shot back and I hope I sound like her. The world owes Ron Reagan a great deal. That was the sentence and that I'm sure um, was, what she, was, what, was what she thought and what she said.